This video is about federated machine learning. What I will cover today is basic concept and the benefits that federated machine learning can bring. So if in your current role, your responsibility is to explore different ideas and find out the technologies that can bring value, this video is for you. Or if you are a research student and would like to get started with federated machine learning, yes, this video can benefit you as well. So I will not go into the technical details, very high level introduction of federated machine learning without going into the details of any specific framework. So let's get started. Before we start with the federated machine learning, let's have a quick look how things have progressed over the years when it comes to the machine learning. What we have seen so far is that most of the time when it comes to the machine learning, this is the kind of model that we are quite familiar with. We have different data sources, data sources generate data, we collect the data to a central location, do the model training, and once we have the model available, we can use that. So this whole architecture um, served us quite well. And over the years, the most of the progression that we have seen uh, in machine learning, that is due to this centralized kind of architecture. But over the years, what we have seen is that now things starting to become more challenging when it comes to the uh, collecting the data. And there are good reasons for that. So basically this part where data sources uh, send the data to a central location is getting more uh, challenging. So there are three main uh, verticals you can say uh, when it comes to the collection of data that are uh, that highlights the challenges. First is that due to the sheer pace of the data, it is becoming very difficult to centralized all the data data sets coming from different sources the second is that organizations like banks hospital and other uh, organizations that are dealing with this sensitive data it is very difficult if not impossible uh, to share the data outside the premises of the organization and the third op third challenge is that businesses are reluctant to share the data so based on these three verticals there is a clear need that, okay, if we cannot collect the data to a central location, we need to find some better ways to still train our models based on the maximum data sets available uh, around us. So one of the options is federated machine learning. How it works is federated machine learning depends on two components, server side, where the aggregation happens, and the client side, where the data uh, results and throughout this training process that I will explain in a minute the idea is that client will have complete autonomy over their data the data never leaves the client's premises so how the training process starts is that the server sends a signal to each client that okay I am sending you a model use that model together with your local data set and start the training but don't fully train the model just run a couple of epochs and whatever partially trained model that you have sent back to the server. Server receives the, uh, the local models, do the aggregation and prepare a new model and again send the same message to the client. That client, here is a new model, use your local data and start the training, but don't completely uh, run the training process, just run a couple of epochs and then send the model back. This whole process runs iteratively and after some time, there is a global model that the system generates, which is the good representation of the local data sets available on the client side without the need of the data to be moved from client side to the server side. So with this kind of approach, clients have the complete autonomy over their data throughout, this, throughout the training process, but still there is a possibility that we can train a model. And that's because of this, the because of the nature of this whole training process, federated machine learning often considered as privacy preserving uh, training environment for model training. But and th this is the main selling point most of the time. But let's go beyond and try to understand that is privacy the only benefit that federated machine learning provides or there are some other interesting angles that can give quite a lot of value to different businesses. 
So consider the standard method of federated uh, of machine learning, where the idea is that clients are allowed to share their data. And think about if I would like to train a model, the model size is of around 10 MB and each client holds this 100 uh, different data sets. Client 1 holds 100 GB, uh, client 2 holds uh, 50 GB and client 3 also holds uh, 50 GB. And in total, the data set in the system is 200 GB. If I would like to use this standard model, what I need to do is that all the clients need to send their data to a central location and start the training process. Once the training process finished, I have a model that I can use. So in total, I need to transfer the whole 200 gigs from the sources to the central location. And if the clients also need to use that data set, then in the end of the end of this process, we have two copies of the data. One on the center uh, on the central storage where I will uh, start the training and on the client side where they each individual clients need to work on the data set as well. So that's the whole math based on the standard method. Let's go and see what changes federated machine learning brings to this process. So this is the kind of uh, setup that I showed you. Please note that the, the numbers written in uh, on top of the green boxes are the steps. And when I will explain the model, the steps that uh, that will be mentioned are basically referring to these numbers. OK, again, the same problem I have. I need to train a model. The model size is 10 MB. I have three uh, clients. Distributions are there and the total data set is 200 GB. Let's calculate the com uh, communication overhead. Round one, step one, where the server sends a message to all the clients that, OK, it's time to uh, start the training. I'm sending you the model. Please use that model and use your local data set and start the training process. Since there are three clients in our use case, if I would like to send a packet of 10 MB uh, to three persons, it will be 10 MB to three, means around 30 MB, step one. Step two is that the clients need to run the training process. That doesn't require any uh, mm, communication, so no communication there. Third step, now clients have their data, uh, their local uh, models, and they need to send back to the server. Again, three client, based on three clients, it will be three multiplied by uh, model size, 10 MB around 30 MB. And the fourth step is that the, uh, the server side need to do the aggregation. Doesn't require any communication. So in total for one round, how much data need to be transferred over the wire is 60 MB. And think about like if this whole process need to run in, uh, in terms of uh, multiple rounds and the total number of rounds that we need in this case is uh, are 100 so then in total 100 rounds will require 60 MB the, da uh, the, the data that uh, is required for run one round multiply by 100 around 6000 MBs which is equivalent to 6 GBs and in the end of the day based on federated machine learning kind of setup we will have a good representation, a good gro uh, global model just by using 3% of the total data set on the wire. So this is a huge benefit. Another big benefit of this whole approach is that there are not, we are not having now multiple copies in the system. So data always stays on the client side. Clients have the complete autonomy over their, over their data and we require quite a less amount of resources to train our model. Now, if I started to think more about different use cases, think about like if you have large organizations and there are a lot of data available uh, over the years. This approach can be very useful by uh, in terms of training models and not creating multiple copies on different sites. More importantly, think about cross device kind of environment. Large number of devices available over the network, geographically distributed 
and you need to train the model. You, there is always a challenge to collect all the data based on the devices to a central location. This approach can give you quite a lot of benefit. So that's all what I would like to highlight in this video. We, what we have covered is the basic idea and based on a very simplistic example, I have highlighted the benefits of federated machine learning. Thank mm -hmm. you.